who followed the Holy Ghost service. I hope you are, those people are clapping, are clapping because they are not hearing it. All right. Okay, can you hear me now? Uh, you are still not hearing. If you are not hearing, clap. Ah, okay, you are hearing now. <laughs> I was sharing very briefly with those who follow the Holy Ghost service uh, on the internet that I was going to preach a sermon, first of all, based on Exodus 17 from verse 8 to 15 today before God told me to change the sermon. What the original sermon would have been is that when the Amalekites came to attack the children of Israel, Moses went to the mountain top with Aaron and Hor. When he lifted up his hands, the children of Israel began to win. When his hands went down, the children of Israel began to lose. And the revelation I got from that is that as long as your hands are lifted, you will keep on winning. So will you lift your hands to the Most High God and just bless his holy name, lift your hands to him and give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration, praise him like you have never done before so that you can keep on winning. Lift your hand to the almighty God and say, Father, I, I, I just want to bless your name. I want to give you all glory. I want to give you all honor. I want to give you all adoration. I live too high, Lord. I live too high, ancient of days. I bless your name, King of kings and Lord of lords. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that I survived. Oh, yes, blessed be your holy name. Thank you for victory. Ancient of days, we worship you. We give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all adoration, Lord. May your name be glorified forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. Amen. Blessed, 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 blessed be your holy name, Lord. Thank you, ancient of this. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Hallelujah, oh, mighty is 
Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, the way, the truth, the life, Savior, healer, provider, deliverer, the soon coming King. Glory be to your holy name. Accept our in Jesus. Thank you that we did not go with 2020. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. All we have come to do today is worship you. We just want to thank you. We're not here to ask for anything. The only thing we want to ask for is that we'll be able to praise you throughout this year. Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Amen. And let somebody shout hallelujah. I wave at two or three people and say happy new year. And then you may please be seated. I will be talking to you from Judges chapter 15, from verse 14 to 19. Judges 15, from verse 14 to 19. But while you are opening your Bibles, I just want to share one or two things with you, my children. And what I'm about to say is not for public consumption. It's just for you. So don't take it to the press. Just it's for you. Because I know some of you have been asking me 
That is why the Drew canceled the crossover service. We were getting ready to come to the camp to sing and dance and, and jump. <laughs> now I will tell you why. Reason number one, I saw what happened as an opportunity to teach you another lesson on submission. You see, when you obey in agreement with what your boss says, that is called cooperation. What do I call it? Uh -huh. Your boss asks you to do something, you agree with him, and you do it. That is called cooperation. When your boss asks you to do something, and you do it, even though you, you do not agree with him, it is called submission. What do I call that one? Uh -huh. Submission is when you obey, even when you don't agree. You just submit. That's what is called being under authority. The authorities in government, authorities in Christian Association of Nigeria said that the crossover service should be held in some said by 10 p.m. you should close. Another one said by 11 p.m. you should close. I said, okay. Let's agree and close in our home. You see, because it's all funny to me. Crossover by 10. 10 p.m. December 31. That's crossing over to 2020. God forbid, bad thing. So other than crossover by 10 p.m. or crossover by 11 p.m., I said, we will stay in our house and crossover at 12 midnight. Proper crossover. I found it funny because nobody has told us yet that coronavirus attack people at night. So, I, 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 I'm talking to you, my children. Don't, <laughs> don't report to me. I said, nobody told us that coronavirus is a witch. It's only witches who fly at night. And if coronavirus is a witch, then it means he can hear. If I'm a witch, God forbid, I'm not a witch. But if I'm a witch, and I hear that the people I want to kill will be in their houses, they would have run away to their houses by 12 midnight, then I will kill them by 11 or 10. But I'm telling you all this to say one thing. Don't be afraid. What do I say? Uh, there is fear in the air. Fear is a killer. The way things are going, some people will die of hypertension, of high blood pressure, simply because they are afraid. And coronavirus may not even come near them at all, but fear can kill. Now, you need to understand, and, and, and I'm talking to you responsibly, that the government and government officials are doing a very good job. They are trying their best. When you ask a man to do a job that only God can do, 
don't blame him if he makes if he makes mistakes. They are trying. They are doing their very best, humanly speaking, to protect us. They do some funny things in the process. For example, I learned that they close some restaurants. I said, ah. <laughs> How many of us go to restaurants? We go to Buka. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? Restaurant. Only the big ones go to restaurant. And let me tell you, those of us who think that going to restaurant is something special, uh, Buka is better. I know now, I've tasted both of them. The, the food in the restaurant, eh? they will calculate the amount of salt they think you should eat. They will calculate the amount of oil that they think you should eat. By the time they finish their cooking, it tastes like plastic. But the mama in the book, I've been doing this thing long ago. She, she knew the calculation of it. Do you notice that, that the few of you who go to restaurants once in a while and visit Buka occasionally, do you notice that in the Buka nobody ever asks for extra salt? Why? Mama knows the correct salt. <laughs> So when they told me that they closed some restaurant, I said, uh, Sakara, <laughs> we don't go to restaurant, we go to Buka. And how many Buka are you going to close? And then what? <laughs> uh, What are you going to do about people like me who eat body? <laughs> During the uh, Goa fishing program, I mean, those of you who are in charge, you know, body is my favorite food. When I'm going out fishing, because there's no time to sit down to eat any proper, but body. <laughs> So I want you to relax. Don't be afraid. Put your hand on your chest and say, I will not be afraid. My God will take care of me and I will serve him. Give the Lord a big round of applause. Now, just in case anybody may want to misunderstand me, please, when I say relax, I do not say be careless. I hope you know the difference between the two. Hey, if, when they say wear your mask, wear your mask. I don't want to go into details about that one. But when they, when they ask you to wash your hand, wash your hand, you know we are very particular about hygiene anyway. I mean, you come to the convention, you know every day we mention the names of those who are dirty. So when they say wash your hand, even when Koro is gone, keep on washing your hand. <laughs> now, when they talk about social distancing, do that as much as possible. I know some people are very, <laughs> some, uh, some, what do you call them now, ushers. On the altar, they come. They put one big stool between me and my wife. I say, ah, la lie. <laughs> I remove this stool. Nobody's going to distance me from my wife. <laughs> what kind of distancing is that? <laughs> Oh, 
obey the government. Okay? Wear your mask. You can see my own now. Wash your hand. I wash my hand regularly, even before Koro came. Um, social distancing. As much as is possible. After all, I can't distance from my wife. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And I'm not going to allow social distancing to prevent me from laying hands on the sick so that they can recover. That's my duty. I will do it. But I want you to please relax, but don't be careless. Do you say amen to that? Mm. Now, God has a special message for those of you in the Redeemed Christian Church of God. You know, your pastors, I said, will tell you some others. But I can tell you this one straight away. He told me loud and clear. How? Loud and clear. My son, the redeemed Christian church of God is my church. I can take care of my own. I will take care of my own. Put your hand on your chest one more time. Say, I will not be afraid. My God will take care of me. And I will serve him. Shout another hallelujah. Good. So now let's go to our Bible passage for the message for today. Judges chapter 15 from verse 14 to 19. And when he came unto Lehi, the Philistines shouted against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. And the cause that were upon his arm became as flax that was burnt with fire, and his bands loose from off his hands. And he found a new jawbone of an ass, and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. And Samson said, With the jawbone of an ass, heap upon heaps, with the jawbone of an ass have I slain a thousand men. And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking, that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramath Leha. And he was so attached and called on the Lord and said, Thou hast given this great deliverance unto, into the hand of thy servant, and now shall I die for thirst? and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised, but God clave and hollow place that was in the jaw. And there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof En Hakore, which is in Lehi unto this day. You know the story very well. Samson was uh, bound by his own relatives and they handed him over to the Philistines who are the enemies. And the enemies began to rejoice. And as the enemies began to rejoice, the power of God came down. And he saw the jawbone of an ass. And with the jawbone of an ass, he killed 1,000 men out of his enemies, and the rest of them fled. Let me stop at that stage first to tell you one thing. In the name that's above every other name, your eternal enemies, those who want to hand you over to the external enemies, shall be confused. They shall be disappointed. 
As for your external enemies, God will scatter them all. And those who refuse to move, God will uproot them. As something got victory, the weapon he used to get the victory, he threw it away. And then he became thirsty. In the meantime, he had been boasting. Hey, look at me, big man, with the jawbone of an ass. I killed a thousand men. Then he became thirsty. And at that time, he remembered God. God, I'm thirsty. Ah, thirsty is a killer. I, I know I've defeated the external enemies of the defeated relatives. What about this one that is killing me from, from inside? And God said, well, take a look at the, the thing you threw away. There's water coming out of there. So he drank from that hollow that is in the uh, jawbone of the earth. The Bible says he revived. First of all, whatever you did for God that brought you thus far, don't stop doing it. Do I hear amen to that? Some of us prayed last year like we have never prayed before. If it is prayer that God honored that brought us to 2021, don't stop praying. Some of us were obedient to God. We honored him with our first fruits. We paid our tithes. We gave our offerings in spite of what some people were saying. We kept on serving our God, and he kept on preserving us. After all, God himself is aware that only the living can praise him. Whatever we've been doing before, don't let us stop. But the most important thing I want to mention here is that in this story, you do not find something saying, thank you, Lord. He didn't say so. And I want you to take very, very special note of what I'm about to tell you in the, within the next 10 minutes. Number one, when you are grateful to God for what he had done, he will do more. Can you say amen to that? Yeah. The elders, the African elders, they say, if a child is grateful for what you did for him yesterday, he will receive more. That's the proverb of our elders. Second Chronicles chapter 1, from verse 6 to 15. Second Chronicles 1, 6 to 15. Solomon was grateful for what God did in the past. He gave God a thousand burnt offerings. And God said, all right, Solomon, because you have done this, I will do much more for you. If you are grateful for what God has done for you, he will do more. The elders in Africa, they have a saying. They said, when you've done good to a child, and the child is not grateful, that child is like a robber. That's what the elders say. And whether you believe it or not, our elders may not go to school, but their philosophy is deep. They know what they are talking about. If you are ungrateful to God for what he had done for you in the past, he may remove what he has given you. For Samuel, Chapter 2, verse 30. For Samuel, chapter 2, verse 30. He said to Eli, 
I am the one who said you and your father's house will stand before me forever. He said, but now I say no more. He said, because those who honor me, I will honor. And those who would not honor me, I will treat them lightly. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, you can read the old chapter. 1 Samuel chapter 15, the old chapter. The Almighty God said to King Saul, You were little when I promoted you and made you king. You became king. Now you are not obeying me anymore. Fine. You will be king no more. If you are grateful, he will do more. If you are ungrateful, he can withdraw what he had given. But the most important lesson of all that I pray you will not forget for the rest of your life is that sooner or later you will need God again. Samson just won a big victory. He never said thank you. He was praising himself. Hey, look at me, mighty man. Task came. And then he suddenly realized, I need God again. Thank God, God came through and gave him water to drink. After that, he did not say thank you. It wasn't long after that one that first he lost his eyes and then he lost his life. You are going to need God again. Psalm 50 from verse 14 to 15. Psalm 50 from verse 14 to 15. He said, Offer thanksgiving unto God. Pay your vows. Then call on him in the day of trouble. And he will answer you. Thank him for what he's done in the past. Pay your vows. Then if trouble ever comes again, he so will be there waiting for you. For example, in Exodus chapter 14, from verse 1 to 28, Exodus 14, 1 to 28, the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea. They had a proper crossover. As soon as they cross over and all the enemies that have been pursuing them were destroyed, they praised God. Moses composed a song. Miriam, the sister of Moses, led the choir. They were clapping, they were dancing, they were playing their tambourines, they praised God in Exodus 15. You can read it from verse 1 to 21. Exodus 15 from verse 1 to 21. They were just praising God. In the same Exodus 15, if you read it from verse 22 to 26, Exodus 15, 22 to 26, it wasn't long after that that they came to Mara. They were thirsty. They came to where they needed to drink. The water was bitter. But because they had thanked God in the past, God changed their bitter water to sweet. I decree in the name that's above every other name, as many of you as we really, really thank God today, if there's any bitterness in your future, it will be changed to sweetness. <laughs> Take another example. 4 Samuel chapter 17, from verse 34 to 51. 4 Samuel 17, from verse 34 to 51. David said, 
a lion came. I fought him and killed him. A bear came. I fought him. I killed him. Now Goliath is here. I will kill Goliath also. Why is he so sure? Remember he said something. He said, the Lord that delivered me from the lion and the bear, he will deliver me also from Goliath. Why is this boy so sure? Why am I so sure that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter what they are saying, no evil is going to come near the redeemed Christian church of God. Why am I so sure? It's because of what I'm telling you now. Because David said in Psalm 34, you can read it from verse 1 to 4. Psalm 34 from verse 1 to 4, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The lion came. I defeated the lion, and he composed a poem. <laughs> we call it Psalm. Then the bear came. He killed the bear. He composed another psalm. So he said, I know what to do. I'm constantly praising God, so let them keep coming. I will keep on winning. Ebola came. We survived. Corona has come. We will survive. Yeah. Any other one that they want to come, let them come. We will survive. Because we will keep on praising God. Your trust must be in God. If you hear the prophecy concerning uh, the, the international scene, God said the, the, the world hasn't learned his lesson yet. It's a lesson that he wanted them to learn. That is the one who rules in the affairs of men, not science. That if there are scientists in the world, he's the one who gives wisdom to the wise and he can turn human wisdom to foolishness. Oh, they've discovered vaccine and they are rejoicing. <laughs> you see, like I said, some of these things are so funny. I read in the news that the American president says at the rate at which they are going, it will take 10 years to vaccinate all people in America. I said, God have mercy. If they are going to take 10 years to vaccinate themselves, when will the, <laughs> when will the vaccine come to Nigeria? And in 10 years, in any case, how many people will still be alive? I read in the newspapers that Bill Gates said he doesn't know why the people in Africa are not dying. I said, I will tell him, we have no money, we have no resources, but we have God. <laughs> Let somebody shout hallelujah. They expected us to be dying like flies. <laughs> but we have, this, we have someone who said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Ah, he said, Thousand will die by your left, ten thousand by your right, with you, only with your eyes will you behold. Tell the fellow next to you, I'm not going to die. <laughs> Say it as if you be me. <laughs> but you must learn to be grateful. We're not, we are not grateful enough. We are not grateful 
enough. That's my, that's my own greatest concern for us in the redeemed Christian Church of God. If we don't do anything in the redeemed Christian Church of God than just thanking God all the days of our life, what God has done for us is more than enough. The church started here in the Butemeta in Bodov. Bodov. When I joined in 1973, even the ground was not uh, properly concreted. From our little dusty place, today we are in 196 nations of the world. <laughs> if that is the only thing we are thanking God for, it's enough. I mean, <laughs> I remember the first time that during the convention, a woman came forward and said she wanted to testify. What's your testimony? I've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I came to last year's convention. Now I'm here with my child. We dance. Now during the convention, when we call those who were barren the year before, who are fruitful now, to come forward, they come by thousands. Ah. <laughs> we need to be grateful. I told my children not too long ago, I said, some people asked me, Daddy, we hear that several nights, you just go about in the night, from night to early in the morning, what, what are you praying about? I'm not praying for clothes. I'm not praying for cars. I'm not praying for money. All I'm doing is thanking God. I have discovered if you thank him, he will do more for you. And you know what? In case you feel, well, I don't need him. I have everything. I have more than enough money that I can spend for the rest of my life. I am this, I am that. You are still going to need him when it is time to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. No matter how great you are, you will need him. You will need him. You know, this coronavirus, something like I keep telling people, God is just saying, wake up, wake up. Suddenly there is a sickness or a disease or whatever name they call it that has no respect for anybody. It can attack anyone. Presidents, <laughs> prime ministers. I mean, can you imagine? Prime Minister of Great Britain, uh, President of the High and Mighty. Uh, just in case you want to report me, I'm also saying that he has no respect for General Vasiasu. So. Uh -huh. He doesn't respect anybody. When the time comes for you to go through the valley of the shadow of death, you will need God. Because if you have him by your side, you will fear no evil. So if you are already a true child of God, show God this year that you are a grateful child. And I'm telling you then, this year will be a glorious one for you. So if you have made up your mind that you are going to praise him like never before this year, then with all confidence you can turn to the fellow next to you and say, Happy New Year, Joe. <laughs> and then you can turn to the other side and say, Happy New Year, Jerry. <laughs> And for the last time, I want you to lay your hand on your chest and say, I will not fear. My God will take care of me, and I will serve him.
Shout another hallelujah. Finally, if you are not yet saved, you are coming to church, or maybe you are coming for the first time today because it's first Sunday of the year, you must know that you have been living on mercy. The Bible says it is of the mercy of the Lord that we are not consumed. If you have been living on mercy and that mercy has brought you to the year 2021, don't joke with the mercy of God. If he withdraws that mercy, there will be nothing left. So if you are listening to me and you are not true of your, you are not sure of your salvation, come now. Come and give your life to Jesus Christ. He will save your soul. You will become a child of the living God. You become part of those people that he say, I will take care of. I'm calling you now. I'm going to count from one to seven. If you want to give your life to Jesus, come now. I'm counting. One. Two. You have to come very quickly. Three. God bless you. This can be a very good year for you as you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. He will save your soul and he will take care of his own. Four. Five. Hurry up, hurry up. Six. And keep coming if you are still on the way. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Now those of you already in front and those who might still be on the way, cry to Jesus Christ and ask him to be merciful unto you. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to forgive your sins. Ask him to receive you into his family so that he can take care of you for the rest of your life. And the rest of us, please let's stretch our hands towards these our brothers and sisters and let us intercede for them that the God who saved our souls will save their own souls also. That the blood that washed us clean will cleanse them from all their sins also. Pray for them, brethren, intercede. And if you are still on the way, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. I'm about to pray for salvation now. Yes, you are welcome, my sister. You are welcome. And if anybody else wants to come, come now, quickly. Come very quickly. Don't miss this day. This is your day. God bless you. God bless you. You are welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, Savior. If you are coming, keep coming. Just make sure you get here before I finish praying. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Savior, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you because you will take care of your own. And thank you for these people that have come forward. Please receive them. Have mercy on them, Lord. Let your blood wash away their sins. Please, as you are saving their souls today, write their names in the book of life and let them serve you for the rest of their lives. Please, Lord God Almighty, from now on, anytime they call on you, answer them by fire. Thank you, Almighty. And once again, I'm committing all your children all over the world listening to me today into your hands. Throughout this year, let us have great cause to glorify your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord.
And now those of you who have come forward, congratulations. I promise you I'll be praying for you from now on. And so you will need to go with the counselors who will collect the information I need. And then I assure you I'll be praying for you. God bless you. Counselors, you can please guide them the way they should go. Let's clap for Jesus as they go. Let's clap for Jesus as they go. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. Keep clapping. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we all know that today is our special annual Thanksgiving service, and they will begin to guide us as how we go about it now. But before they take over from me, why don't you stand on your feet and just thank God from the bottom of your heart? Why don't you sing unto him, clap unto him, dance before him? Just show him that you appreciate what he had done for you in the past. You are going to need him again, so praise him now. Praise him from the bottom of your heart. Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. He has been very, very good to you. Very, very good to you. Praise him, praise him. <laughs> 